Welcome back and thank you very much to everybody who commented on the last few videos I've done. It means a lot to me to know that what I'm doing is being received and people are enjoying the content and uh, I will try and make things a bit quicker. I am though trying to react to comments and to things that people have asked me for so I thought I'd do that today. I'm doing a job where I'm going to be taking these old bits of rope and making them into sail ties, a little loop on this end and then a little whipping on the other end and making old sheath into something useful on the boat. But someone said to me in the comments, could you show us around the tools that you have on board, the things that of course allow us to get on with these jobs wherever we are around the world. If you haven't got the right tools, you can't do anything. So I thought we'd dive into the rigging bag here before we get on with that little job and you can see what I've got. Okay, so this is my rigging bag. I bought it in France um, and it is actually from, from Liros or Lyros, however you wanna pronounce it and it's intended as a rigging bag. So what have I got in here? Well I guess the thing I most often come to is this palm and flat flat cotton. What else have we got in here? Oh, there's some wax in there and there's some needles up here. Now if I had to critique the stuff I've got here now um, I bought this stuff when we were in France when we had to take this boat back to um, Canada and we had very little time to buy anything. I only had a few uh, moments and a few um, chandleries to go in, so I bought this palm. It's not the best ever. Its little holes here are actually not very deep to the point that I'd rather get a drill and just drill into them a little bit. At the moment I'm having to hook all of my needles onto the side of the palm here. Let's just see. Also my needle, I don't mind the needles in this, normally they come in those little, so this would be a more normal kind of position. Obviously you'd have some thread in there, but these are not very good for holding a palm. I've got another one of these which is much older and much better, so I tend to have to hook it into there, which makes the position difficult. Um, but we're getting there anyway, but sailor's palm, and you can get these for left or right hand, so uh, if you are a left hander then definitely that's, uh, that's already sorted out. Um, the wax is here in case we're making a seam on a sail and this, it's all like the, the stitching has been done on the sail and then we want to add extra protection for that, um, that con. Uh, it's because I come from a tall ship background so I guess I've got a few tall ship, <laughs> tall ship things that I still do. Uh, fids wise we've got a Swedish fid here. The kind of rope that we work with here we only have you know 14 mil something like this. We're only going into this. We don't need to have a very big Swedish fid. This is for Let's just grab some rope if we need to open up the line like this and find our way through a line Then we can do that with this fid and then that would give you the opportunity to go in with something else Very very useful to have a, a Swedish fid on hand um, Alongside here we've got a ceramic knife. I just used this one in the uh, in the kit here um, ceramic knives are unbelievably uh, sharp and when used with a wooden chopping board like this it gives me a really nice clean edge to work with to uh, cut rope. Um, alongside here a little uh, a vernier gauge looking like it needs a bit of a clean. Um, plastic so it's light and doesn't rust on the boat. Very good for getting uh, rope diameters. The last time I had to use this was in a bit of a disagreement with um, a rigger who sold us a, a halyard for the other boat who was claiming that it was a um, 12 mil halyard and then um, when we uh, got it apart, the core of it was only like eight mil. It was really silly. And he's saying, well, Marlow sometimes do lays which are smaller and large. You're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, so that goes in there. Uh, what do we got here now? All right, we got two things here. This is a diamond hone and a little tub of um, protectorant for my knife. This is my rigging knife. We've talked about this before on the podcast. This was um, specifically made for me by Rick Marchand from Wilder Tools in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. It's got these little Japanese style um, uh, serrations here which are really good in emergency for having to cut through something. Now every uh, element of this knife was uh, designed between myself and, uh, and Rick. It's an uh, absolutely fantastic piece of kit. I had it about five or six years now, something like that. And um, it's unbelievably sharp as you might imagine of a, a knife that's designed specifically to do rigging. Anybody that knows how hard it is to cut through a piece of 14 mil uh, Dyneema, I think you'll appreciate the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the speed with which it goes through. Another way you can cut with a rope like this that Rick showed me is to cut it like that. Um, 
This is specifically what this knife was developed for, and it was uh, made from a, an ingot of steel that Rick had, which was a very, very special kind of stainless steel, very, very hard. And then we've got this carbon fiber uh, with copper woven through it on the uh, hilt here, and then fully riveted through, full thickness on the uh, tang, and then, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful knife. And then snub-nosed, of course, so you can't, uh, you can't accidentally um, shove it into somebody or jab it in the deck. But these are also perfect for getting snap shackles open. You can just pop them into the end of the snap shackle and pop it open. So check out um, Rick's site at Wilder Tools, W-I-L-D-E-R, T-O-O-L-S dot com and um, yeah beautiful beautiful knife the diamond hone here is specifically for working the knife with this um, I could do with a stone perfectly but I don't really have one on the boat and I'm only using these two things this stuff just goes on here and keeps it from from rusting so that's in there and those guys are in there. And of course I can use this on the scissors or something else as well. Um, we've got scissors because if you're doing rigging work, you always end up with scissors. And I've got a cheapo X-Acto blade at the back here for again, doing other kinds of work. I hope you're enjoying this so far. It's a little bit of a departure from me, but if you have anything else like this that you'd want to see on the boat, tools, spare parts, any little jobs, just pop it in the comments down below and I'll try and respond to that. We're going out to sea soon as well. We're going to be sailing from here to Iceland. So if there's anything particular you want to see about that on that solo journey, just knock me up in the comments down below and I'll try and help out. If you haven't already, please click the like button if you're enjoying this. Consider sharing and subscribing. And remember, you've got to keep this channel going because this is the one that you can have open on your desktop when you need to quickly close off sailing doodles. Back to the rigging bag. Um, nothing in there, we've been in there. We've got some millionaires tape here. This is the Teflon tape that you put onto spreaders. It looks like it's completely clear, but there's a tape here. It's very, very expensive, this stuff. It's very, very hard wearing. Well, you just gotta take my word for it. <laughs> I've got no nails at all. Um, you put it on things to stop abrasion. You put it on the front of the spreaders so the halyards don't uh, rub against them and damage the paint on the spreaders. You might put it on the side of the boat where some of your mooring lines rub retroflective tape here which goes on to like the headboard of the mainsail and the uh, place on the mast where the headboard comes to when it lines up for a reef. Um, got a little notebook thing here. We've got a few bits of cotton. It's amazing how they just kind of end up useful sometimes so just keep those in there. So there's a little, little ring in there as well for some reason. Um, these little waterproof notebooks, you know, you're always getting given these, but um, with a, between a, a permanent pen and a little notebook like that, it can be good just to have something to take some notes if you really need to. What else we got up here? This is oh tape. So this is rigging tape. This is for when we do um, uh, uh, rigging jobs, um, like splicing. Um, and this is for taping the line technically uh, when it's going inside of other parts of rope. It's not really for anything external. And this came with the kit. You see it's got the Lyros uh, logo on it. And then we've got rigging tape here. I gotta say, I'm not a massive fan of, uh, of the white tape. When I was um, younger, we only used um, black tape on the boats. And uh, I think the move to the white tape has been that it doesn't get hot and it doesn't transfer its adhesive. What else we got? Oh, that's useful. I didn't know that was down there. Great, so there's a piece of, uh, I think technically that's actually grip tape, but it's uh, been serving in here as a little bit of um, little bit of sandpaper. It's pretty good for that as well. Maybe we'll put that somewhere a bit more useful. Okay, and then across the top here, yeah, the needles normally live here. There's an unpicker in here as well, which got used just the other day when we were doing the um, uh, cockpit bags. There's a little pair of pliers which are just big enough that you can put them in a shackle and do the shackle if you absolutely had to, but they tend to be more for um, little fine jobs. A little Phillips screwdriver here which again prodding and poking. It's not really fun doing screws. I've got that covered by my Gerber here, but um, it's some more prodding and poking things and then permanent pens up at the end here. I always seem to lose permanent pens so there's loads of them. Um, and then these are the shuttles for splicing. These ones, which are like a stainless steel, these are pretty, oh, this one missing. Yeah, these are, this is a newer kit and pretty probably could just do with being on its own. And then from somewhere, I found this old, old one that came in this Samson bag. It looks like it's got some um, 
instructions in here. I guess they've just all kind of ended up together. Not great to have this kind of metal uh, alongside the aluminum because it's going to react, but I have a feeling that that was already... Maybe we can combine these two things <laughs> and put them over to one side here. And again, a piece of tube, I know, shoving, pushing, something like that. Uh, but these shuttles, so what are these shuttles for? These shuttles are for when we're splicing. Um, I'll do a kind of example here, just so we can see what they're for. If you know how to splice, then this is all old school for you, but um, this, particularly once it's feathered down and, and cut down into a smaller diameter for, uh, for the splicing, it goes into here, and this little hook at the back here stops it from moving, and then some of this tape wrapped around here just to secure it in place, and then you're in a perfect situation to uh, pop this inside of itself and move it along. And that's where the benefit of this kind of um, Chinese finger lock design is with these modern ropes. That's what the shuttle is for. And really, I got into, there's two ways of doing this. We can explore these on another, another time, so you need the tape as it all gets caught up on itself. Um, now that would not be a very satisfactory splice, but with other elements in play, there we go. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> um, with uh, There's two ways of doing this. One is that you pull the line through with a wire that you double over and shove up inside. And the other is something like this, and then a long push. It's got like a wooden handle on the end, and then a long piece of metal that goes into here and shoves the, shoves the line through. Um, I don't have the wire. I haven't ever really used that method of, um, uh, of splicing, and I haven't got the push for this system, again, I, I never seem to use it. I kind of just push things along with a Phillips screwdriver that has another roll, and um, or, or just work it through by hand. But um, hey, the last time I did a, um, a video on winches, I learned a lot from the comments. So if you've got anything that you can add in any of this, pl please, please do. I don't take offense at all. I love feedback. As I said, it's the most awful thing to love sailing and um, love all this kind of stuff and then end up in a vacuum where you're always teaching and, and never learning. All right, so in here, uh, well, the stuff. Here's some armor. This is a job that I was working on. This is, uh, if you have a halyard, this is Dyneema armor that can go over the halyard and stop it getting chafed when it's, um, particularly where it's like exiting the mast and it ends up against a sheath and it can end up chafing there. So that's for a couple little jobs that I'm just working on at the moment. Um, big uh, soft shackle. Uh, some of these little hard eyes. It's a kind of collecting place. These got taken off a big cover, like a boom cover thing, which was on the boat. Uh, they haven't got really anywhere else to go. They're a bit old and knacky, but they might have a job yet. There's a bit of elastic, or there's a, a huge other bag of elastic elsewhere. And then all different bits of gear that's to do with rigging, you know? It's just stuff. There's some SK99 Max there, the hardened stuff that's pre-stretched for rigging. This is some lashet line. It's not actually Dyneema, but it, um, Looks pretty good, that looks like Dyneema. Some reflective stripes off sails, and then lots of twine here used for making all these different things. So, pretty useful. These are um, these are the tops out of little um, rope things for hanging up ropes in the locker, in, in the cockpit rather. Meant to have a loop on it like that, quite a long loop on it. And then you can double it over and bring it up on top of itself. How does that work again? Oh yeah, they're like, this and then they double round the rope and go over that little hook there. Um, they're pretty lightweight. They might have some kind of use on a boat like this, but as always, you know, I'm a, I'm a long way from perfect. <laughs> and uh, your kit always ends up just with loads of stuff. And if anybody's asking, there's a little Lego figure called Snake Hips McGee that my uh, my daughter gave to me, which uh, will turn up all over the place as it's always with me here on on the boat. So. That's the gear that we're using. Um, let me get this stuff out of the way. Um, I know that this, uh, the demonstration with the, uh, the knife is always uh, somewhat <laughs> shocking for folks if you haven't seen this before. This is why a rigging knife will have a flat uh, edge. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a nice clean way of getting through the rope. All right, that doesn't go in there. So tempting, so tempting. All right, put the knife away. Alrighty, so the job we are doing today is we are going to be making some of these little loops. Come on, buddy. We've got two things to do. We're making a, a Flemish 
a loop or Flemish eye or Flemish splice, whatever you want to call it, on the end of the rope here. This one is very short, and then we're going to be doing a whipping on the end on these guys. So we're going to need the needles. We're going to need we're going to need twine, but not this one. I tend to leave this twine in the bag here as a a go-to. Again, I started. Oh, what am I doing? I need that. Uh, I started my um, sailing career on tall ships, so there's still a part of me that looks at a piece of flat white twine and thinks, yeah, that's that's how that should be. <laughs> I don't want anything more complex than that. But for this one, we're going with red because we're going to do a gentle bit of color coding here to um, to make sure that the uh, sail ties don't end up just being used all over the place. And then we don't have any when the mainsail comes down. So we've got two ends that we want to work on. Let's get into it. Okay, well that's the end of that job for now. You said you wanted shorter videos. This is just 15 minutes, but I've already made the rest of it. I'll put that up tomorrow so you can see how to make those sail ties. Very simple and very useful. When you've got a massive, big boom like this, you need to make sure you've got something that's big enough to go all the way around. But um, if the sail ties on your boat are starting to look a bit tatty, it might just give you something that you can do that uh, uses up that old rope, keeps it out of the uh, garbage, keeps it out of the landfill. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and comment down below. It makes a massive difference to the channel and a massive difference to my ability to keep doing this long term. We've only got a couple days here left in Southampton, then we're off to Iceland. So I'll be making a lot of video on the way there. You can see how it goes driving this boat on my own a thousand miles up to Iceland but until the next one I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing you are safe you are sound I look forward to speaking to you in the next one cheers